So today I'm going to be reviewing a video that Nicole Skies posted. If you guys don't know who that is, she's a popular YouTuber. She does, um, like, I don't know, experiment videos, vlogs, all that kind of stuff. And I saw some people were concerned that she got a horse. And, yeah, so I want to talk about why today and watch her video. So I'm going to skip part of the video that's not really relevant to like right now that talks about her horse now. Do everything. Um, he did have a huge vice. He couldn't be cross-tied. He couldn't be tied whatsoever. As soon as he like pulled and felt any bit of pressure on him, he would instantly freak out and rip through whatever. Like crazy. I learned so much from Okay, so I've actually heard of a lot of people whose horses can't be tied, and honestly, I hate that. Like, I hate the fact that you can't tie your horse up. Honestly, if my horse was that bad at being tied up, I would probably, like, if a horse is freaking out because of the pressure they feel on their head, I would let them walk around with a lead rope on and let them step on it and constantly feel that pressure of them stepping on it, and then they'll just eventually get used to it and realize that they just need to move their foot over and that gets them a lot like I said used to it and realizes that it's not a panic it's not something to panic over because it's really not especially if a horse is breaking things and will rip through stuff then I would put like a super strong rope halter on them a super strong rope and tie them to a heavy ass wooden post and let them rip all they want. They'll figure out eventually they can't rip a post out of the ground. So that's just how I do it. I'm pretty harsh though. Some people don't like that. With that advice, it was crazy. So we'd use breakaways on him and then I would just not tie him. He, he was a special snowflake. Oh, I don't like that either. Like I hate when people use breakaways because that will literally just teach your horse that if they rip back, they can get away. Like. Horses aren't stupid, like if they figure that out, then you're just never going to be able to tie them. And then once you do tie them, now that they're used to being able to just break away, they realize that they're stuck and then they panic even more. So that's just my advice. So at least I was scared for a year, I think. We as a team came very far. He was super green. He was super green. I was super green. And I like, I hate it when people go, oh my God, don't put a green horse on a green rider. It's as long as you have a trainer and someone who knows what they <laughs> I want to say a certain YouTuber's name so bad right now, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And like, you guys already probably know who I'm talking about anyway. They're doing and like, and can do a pro ride or a tune up here and there. It's not that big of a deal. It depends on how good the rider is. It also depends on how willing the horse is. Obviously, I don't know. There's a lot of variations here, but to just be biased and say, don't put a green rider on a green horse. Sorry, my dog's kicking the camera. It's just... The horse movies. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it so bad, but I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna be that bitch. You people that say they are very concerned about me and having a horse, you guys know like one percent of my life, and I hope that me talking about like my riding history kind of open your mind a little bit more. That it's not like a fly by night decision that I wanted to get a horse. A horse has always been a part of my life. She said that because I feel like a lot of people are so quick to judge when like. A person you wouldn't expect gets a horse and like she said she's like you guys know 1% of my life <laughs> like I hate when people even on my channel where I share a lot of my knowledge on horses come on here like they've known my whole riding story my whole life and know everywhere where I've been and act like they've known me forever I'm like back it up bitch some people say that I don't have enough time for a horse because I'm a youtuber it's like okay hold on wait a minute here a lot of people have full-time jobs and a horse. A lot of people go to school full-time and have a horse. I work from home. I have the ability to do whatever I want, whenever I want. It takes me a couple hours to film, edit videos. I don't travel on tour. And even if I did travel on tour, I would hire people to take care of her, ride her, and make sure she gets the care she needs. She's already in full care. That's kind of a good point. I think a lot of people think, like, that... If you don't have time for a horse, that means you don't have time to ride your horse every single day and go see your horse every single day and spend hours with them every day. 
honestly, you your horse doesn't need that. Like your horse doesn't need you to be on them all the time every day. Like I don't see my horses every day. I definitely don't. Like maybe once a week. Actually, I went two weeks without seeing my horses just recently because I was in Kentucky. And so like your horse doesn't need you to be around all the time. As long as you have enough time to take care of them, to make their vet appointments, be there when they need their vet appointments and their hoof trimmings, and you have time to ride them at least once every couple of weeks, like that's enough. I mean, your horse doesn't need you there every single day for hours every day. Like good for her if she wants to go out and clean the stall every day and that sort of thing. But like when I feel like people make it um, like an extra job to have a horse and some people like for me it is a job to have a horse but for like people like this who just want a horse as another pet or a hobby like those people don't need to ride their horse every day your horse doesn't need to be ridden every day like I guess good if you want to go see your horse every day but your horse isn't gonna die if you don't see them every day like if you guys know what I mean I feel like people are just really obsessive like Okay, yeah, I don't see my horse every minute of every day, but that doesn't mean I don't have time to have a horse. Now, she gets turned out in the AM. Also, if we ever move in the future, because you guys are worried about me moving around so often, it's called a horse trailer. You can trailer horses. You can bring a horse wherever you are. Like, if I decided I want to move back to California, if I decided I want to move, like, to, to Nashville, horse trailer. Not that hard. And, and <laughs> Uh, yeah, I see what she means there. Like, I get people are worried if she moves, but most of that is probably just uneducated horse people. But at the same time, I don't think, if you have a horse, I don't think people should just be okay with moving nonstop. Because that's going to be hard on your horse, even if a horse has the same owner. Like I've always said, I don't like seeing horses that have been in a lot of homes. Well, even if a horse still has the same owner and they're going from barn to barn to barn, getting adjusted, getting new herd mates, all that type of stuff. I mean, that's still going to be hard on the horse. So even though they have the same owner, your horse is still going from a home to a home to a home. So I don't feel like if you're a person who loves to travel and loves to go all over the place and move every couple years, it's probably not the best thing for you to have a horse. I would suggest maybe leasing horses because... I mean, you got to put it in your horse's aspect, too. For all of you guys saying, please, get a trainer. It's like, no shit, Sherlock. I will have a trainer. As soon as I can ride her on her back, I will start taking lessons with a trainer. It's kind of like an essential tool that you need when you have a horse. Oh, I kind of disagree with that a tad because she's like, it's an essential tool when you have a horse to have a trainer. And that's totally not true, in my opinion. Um, growing up, I never had a trainer. Never. I never even took lessons. Like, I literally had to figure it out myself. But I guess it depends on what you want to do with your horse. Like, if you're going to be showing your horse and you want advice, like, she said she's pretty rusty. She hasn't ridden in a few years. So, yeah, she'll probably need somebody to, like, correct her seat or whatever, or her ek or whatever they call it. Um, if she's, you know been out of it for a while but if you just have a horse that you just like to ride and you like to do some jumps here and there you like to go trail riding kind of what I do I just like having my horses I like riding I like going places doing parades like that type of thing you don't need a trainer for that like it depends on what you want to do like if she, I don't feel like she should just tell the whole world it's essential you have to have a trainer to have a horse because no no not at all not at all, honey, sorry. But, yeah, I guess if you're training for a specific sport and you want expert advice, I mean, trainers cost money, so if you want expert advice, then that's up to you, but it's not an essential. Wow, this quality looks so different. I did not like So I think that's kind of the end of the horse-related stuff. So I will have this video linked down below. If you guys want to go watch it, feel free. I skipped a lot of it, so... Um, yeah, but I don't think people should be so critical. Like, this girl really sounds like she knows what she's doing, and based on all the horses she's leased, um, it sounds like she's had her fair share of riding time, that's for sure. So, um, I don't feel like people should freak out because, like, a big YouTuber that lives, like, in the city got a horse. I mean, it's not a huge deal, so. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see, and...
Thanks for watching. Bye.